Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. Today's episode I call, Take Me to Your Leader. There's a cliche in the UFO field that if ETs were to arrive on our planet, they would land on the White House lawn and say, Take Me to Your Leader. And perhaps this is not really a cliche at all, because UFOs did in fact hover over the White House in the early 1950s, a couple of times. They were photographed, they were caught on radar, we chased after them. They did not get a particularly friendly reception. And I'm sure you've heard of several encounters with world leaders, such as the President Eisenhower alleged meeting in 1954 at Edwards Air Force Base, uh, or perhaps the encounter with President Nixon showing Jackie Gleason ET bodies at an Air Force base in Florida. So I'm not talking about these cases. I have about 20 or more cases in which highly placed world leaders across the United States and the world have actually gone public and said in their own words that they've had UFO encounters. This includes presidents like Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, but also governors senators, representatives, people in all stages of politics, all levels of political office. And it's not just in the United States. This is across the world. So this is what I'd like to talk about today. I think these cases are important for a number of reasons. Our world leaders are the ones who are responsible for setting policy, enacting laws, and basically doing the right thing for all humanity. And they are being contacted by UFOs. And I'm guessing the vast majority of them are not talking about it. But these cases are important for that reason alone. And as researcher Antonio Huneus writes, and I quote, UFO sightings by heads of state are always an important milestone because it shows that this phenomenon reaches all walks of life, including politicians and national leaders. So what I'd like to do is take you on a little journey through time and present all the cases that I could find of world leaders who have had UFO encounters. And this reaches back decades, all the way to really the dawn of the modern age of UFOs, 1947, up to pretty much the present day. I've got a lot of cases I'd like to present to you today, so let's just get started. Among the first politician or world leader that I could find to step forward and talk about their own UFO encounter was Potter P. Howard. He was the mayor of Boise, Idaho in 1947. And on August 1st, 1947, Mayor Howard was on a United Airlines flight traveling from Boise to Reno, Nevada. And while over the vicinity of Winnemucca, the mayor saw a fleet of a dozen disks sweep below the plane. And as he told the Idaho Statesman newspaper, and I quote, the saucers were several thousand feet below the plane. A woman passenger also saw the 12 disks. So this was a very early case, but ever since then, year after year, politicians and world leaders have been stepping forward to talk about their own encounters. And in fact, the next one I could find occurred five years later on August 5th, 1952, and this involves the former mayor of Gainesville, Texas. His name is H.A. Latham, and he shared his story of his UFO encounter with the News Telegram newspaper. Mayor Latham was fishing with his brother Jack and teenage son Jimmy on the evening of August 5th when they all simultaneously noticed a cylindrical shaped object flying overhead. It was comparable in size, he said, to a large airplane it moved slowly at first in an arc overhead, then darted extremely rapidly to the west. And as Mayor Latham said, 
I've been skeptical up to now of all these flying saucer stories, but all three of us saw it at the same time. Another really excellent case occurred that same year, about one month later, on September 6, 1952. It was 4.55 p.m. when former Congresswoman Isabella King, who was in fact the first Congresswoman in Arizona's history, she and her friend Bill McLean observed an orange tear-shaped object overhead. It first whirled on its vertical axis and then descended very quickly, stopped, and began whirling in the opposite direction and retraced its path upward. So clearly an unusual object, not a shooting star or a plane or anything like that. And after interviewing the witnesses and investigating the incident, intelligence officers from the Air Force's Project Blue Book were stumped. They could not explain it, and the incident became case number 2048 in Blue Book files and was declared unidentified. It was in fact one of several unexplained sightings over the city of Tucson at that time. It's a good case. It was three years later, October 4, 1955, around 7 p.m., when Senator Richard Russell of Georgia was a passenger on a train traveling through the Transcaucasus region of Russia. He had his whole crew with him, and looking out the window of the train, Senator Russell and the others saw a large disc-shaped craft rising up from alongside the railroad tracks. They said a bright flame was coming from the bottom of the craft, which ascended and actually crossed the tracks in front of the train. This was immediately followed by another craft, so Senator Russell alerted his camp companions, who only saw the second disc, before the Soviet train officials quickly shut the cur curtains <laughs> and refused to let the passengers look outside. So they were trying to cover it up. But one of the witnesses was Colonel Hathaway, who said, and I quote, I doubt if you are going to believe this, but we all saw it. Senator Russell was the first to see this flying disc. We've been told for years that there isn't such a thing, but all of us saw it. One disc ascended almost vertically at a relatively slow speed with its outer surface revolving slowly to the right to an altitude of about 6,000 feet, where its speed then increased sharply as it headed north. The second flying disc was seen performing the same actions about one minute later, and the takeoff area was about one to two miles south of the rail line. So at the time, Senator Russell was the head of the Armed Services Committee, it's a very powerful position within the U.S. Senate, and he reported his sighting to various intelligence agencies, but when queried about the sighting by reporters from the Los Angeles Examiner, Russell was very brief in his reply and said only, I have discussed this matter with the affected agencies, and they are of the opinion that it is not wise to publicize this matter at this time. So this remained secret for quite some time, and it wasn't until 1985 that the files about the incident were declassified and the details on this case were revealed. But he's certainly not the only senator to have had a close encounter. There's a long list of highly placed government officials who have seen UFOs. And it wasn't long after Senator Russell's sighting, same year in fact, that Colorado State Senator S. T. Taylor also saw a UFO. This was on November 25, 1955, and it was over La Veta, Colorado. This was a dirigible-shaped object, and according to the senator, this object glowed blue-green and had an almost jelly-like appearance. He estimated it was moving about half the speed of a shooting star, so very quick. It appeared to be at about 15,000 feet elevation, and it was diving downward overhead at a 45 degree angle. But at one point it actually leveled off and then moved upward 
at a 30 degree angle and off over Mount Mestis. So clearly not a shooting star. Senator Taylor estimates it was in view for about five seconds. It made no sound and had no exhaust. He reported his case to the FBI and later to Project Blue Book, who after investigating the case and interviewing Senator Taylor, were not able to identify it and declared it unexplained. This is Blue Book case number 3869. So a good case with an excellent witness. And another encounter um, that seems almost intentional occurred on August 10, 1963. And this was witnessed by Harry L. Bishop. He was the former mayor of Mount Vernon in Illinois. And recently there had been a number of sightings in the area, but on the night in question, August 10, 1963, calls began to flood into the local police station, and Mayor Bishop was unaware of all the activity until his wife observed a strange object around 10 o'clock that night and called him outside. And he ran outside to view it and was shocked at what he saw. I'd just like to read a quote from Mayor Bishop himself. As he says, I could hardly believe my eyes. He said that a bright fire fireball was, quote, coming right down the Centralia Road from the north. He said it was the brightest red light I've ever seen. It appeared to be only 300 or 400 feet high, was oval-shaped, and was about the size of a wash tub. He said, I first saw the lighted object following the route of Centralia Road. When it got over my house, it stopped, and I could see it very clearly. Although it was bright red, it did not light up the neighborhood. It seemed to be making a light whirring sound. So this is very interesting that this object should travel down the road and then stop right over the mayor's house. <laughs> Makes me wonder if it did this on purpose. Um, mayor Bishop immediately did what anyone should do when they see a UFO. He got more witnesses. He called his neighbors out to watch it too. Uh, because he was worried, as he says, everyone would think I was crazy. But his neighbors came out, they saw it too. As Mayor Bishop says, and I quote, I called the neighbors and they also watched the strange lighted object. I noticed a car coming down the Centralia Road. It stopped suddenly and the driver jumped out and looked upwards. He saw the object too and it startled him to a stop. So, Mayor Bishop did talk to reporters from the Register News uh, who investigated it and found out that, yes, there were, in fact, a number of sightings going on at that time. Mayor Bishop and his neighbors watched this object for a good 10 or 15 minutes as it moved westward and finally blinked out, as Mayor Bishop says, like somebody had turned the light off. But after just a few seconds, it reappeared to the west and moved away at a high rate of speed. And he later learned that there were other witnesses, including Robert Trammell, a former Army pilot. So the sighting did cause a local sensation and was printed up in several local newspapers. And it really makes me wonder if these UFOs and occupants are showing themselves to world leaders on purpose. Here's another case. This occurred on April 25, 1966. It was just before 9 p.m. when Florida Governor Hayden Burns took off from a plane in Orlando, Florida. Along with him were his wife, the pilot, the co-pilot, and three campaign ads and four newsmen. It was just a few minutes after takeoff, they had reached an altitude of about 6,000 feet, and without warning, two bright glowing objects began to follow the plane. They were observed by everyone on board, including, of course, Senator Burns, who looked out the window and said, it's a UFO. The co-pilot described the UFO as, quote, two brilliant globes side by side, it kept right with us. 
And at first, Senator Burns did keep quiet about it until he heard that there were a lot of other witnesses. And in an article for the News Tribune, he described the sighting in his own words. And as Senator Burns says, and I quote, We saw the thing ahead of us, right in the air lane, but about 500 feet higher. We watched it for six or seven minutes. At first it looked like a real bright star. As we grew closer, it took on a much greater dimension. The light was most intense, almost like looking into a direct light bulb. We saw no image because the light was blinding. So they called the Miami airport who told them that the object did not appear on their radar. But after tracking this object for several miles, Governor Burns ordered the pilot to actually pursue the UFO. And it, was, it was at this moment that the object actually disappeared. And as Senator Burn, or Governor Burns says, and I quote, I think we scared it away because then it rose at an accelerated rate, something in the vicinity of 300 to 400 miles per hour. The object ascended immediately from 8,000 to near 20,000 feet, and at first it had been absolutely still. So um, to his credit, he did decide to go public. Uh, he began his political career as mayor of Jacksonville, Florida, but became Florida governor in 1965. He was up for re-election in 1966, but unfortunately he lost the election. Many other cases though, just a few years later, September 6, 1971, Wyoming Congressional Representative Malcolm Wallop, who was soon to be a senator, had just finished eating dinner with a group of 15 guests at a ranch near Bighorn, Wyoming. They were all outside on the porch looking at the stars, and without warning, at about 10.15 p.m., a small group of brilliantly lit objects rose from the north west horizon, sped across the sky, and disappeared to the southwest. These objects were in a tight formation and were pulsing in brightness, and they appeared to move with the strange, quote, leapfrogging maneuvers. There was a lot of witnesses, and they disagreed on, disagreed on the exact number of objects, with estimates ranging from about eight to as many as 20 objects but they did all agree that these objects were oval in shape and moving faster than jet aircraft. And in fact, some of them moved so quickly, they left a trail of reddish light behind them. And no sound was ever heard. Other than Representative Wallop, there was other prominent witnesses, including the ranch owner, Alan Fordash, Dr. Robert Connell, and an anonymous Air Force major who was actually on leave from the Pentagon. All of them were pilots, by the way. They immediately contacted the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, who told them that there were no known aircraft in the area. In the days following this incident, at least two other groups of witnesses also reported seeing what appears to be the same objects. Ultimately, Representative Malcolm Wallop never spoke publicly about his sighting, which received only brief mention in a small UFO publication called DataNet. So Representative Wallop, later senator, was best known for being a leading conservative senator during the administration of Ronald Reagan. He held office for quite a long time. Probably the most famous politician to claim a UFO sighting is, of course, Jimmy Carter, who served as governor of Georgia from 1971 to 1975, and, of course, president of the United States from 1977 to 1981. But it was a cold evening on January 6, 1969, when he was beginning to consider running for governor, when Carter and 10 other witnesses were standing outside the Lions Club in Leary, Georgia, when they all saw a strange glowing orb. And as Jimmy Carter says, and I quote, it seemed to move toward us from a distance, stop, move partially away, return, and then depart. 
he described this object as bluish at first, then reddish, luminous, not solid. At times it was as bright as the moon and about as big as the moon, maybe a bit smaller. So he was interviewed about this many times. In 1973, he told reporters, there were about 20 of us standing outside a little restaurant. I believe a high school lunchroom and a kind of green light appeared in the western sky. This was right after sundown. It got brighter and brighter, and then it eventually disappeared. It didn't have any solid substance to it. It was just a very peculiar looking light. None of us could understand what it was. So he continued to be very vocal about this. In 2005, he gave another interview in which he said, and I quote, All of a sudden, one of the men looked up and said, Look, over in the west, and there was a bright light in the sky. We all saw it, and then the light, it got closer and closer to us, and then it stopped. I don't know how far away, but it stopped beyond the pine trees, and all of a sudden it changed color to blue, and then it changed to red, then back to white. And we were trying to figure out what in the world it could be. And then it receded into the distance. So he did actually report his sighting to NICAP, the National Investigative Committee on Aerial Phenomena. And as he said in another interview, I don't laugh at people anymore when they say they've seen UFOs. I've seen one myself. It was the darndest thing I have ever seen. It was big. It was bright. It changed colors, and it was about the size of the moon. And at one point during an interview, he made a remarkable statement. He said, I have no idea what it was, but I think it was a light beckoning me to run in the Georgia primary. So, could this ha have been an intentional sightings? I will say that some skeptics and debunkers, such as Robert Schaefer and James Oberg, have offered various explanations to explain away this sighting, including everything from Venus to a, quote, barium cloud released from Eglin AFB. However, Carter made it clear in his many statements that he believed it was a genuine UFO. And in fact, Jimmy Carter's mother, Lillian Carter, writes that the sighting had a profound effect on her son. As Lillian Carter says in her own words, the UFO made a huge impression on Jimmy. He told me about the sighting many times. He's always been a down-to-earth, no-nonsense boy, and the sighting by him, as far as I was concerned, is as firm as money in the bank. So Jimmy Carter did uh, become president and during his campaign to become President of the United States, he actually promised to make public all the UFO information being held in secret by our own government. As he said, If I become President, I'll make every piece of information this country has about UFO sightings available to the public and the scientists. I am convinced that UFOs exist because I've seen one. Unfortunately, for reasons we can only speculate upon, but some have pointed to national security concerns, Carter did not fulfill this campaign promise. However, he did make another really interesting contribution towards this subject when the Voyager spacecraft was constructed and launched by the U.S. This was in 1977 that Carter actually wrote a message directly to the ETs. And I think this is an important enough message that I'd like to read it for you. And this is from Jimmy Carter. As he says on this golden record that was sent out into space for the ETs, This Voyager spacecraft was constructed by the United States of America. We are a community of 240 million human beings among the more than 4 billion who inhabit the planet Earth. We human beings are still divided into nation states, but these states are rapidly becoming a single global civilization. We cast this message into the cosmos. 
it is likely to survive a billion years into our future when our civilization is profoundly altered and the surface of the earth may be vastly changed. Of the 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, some, perhaps many, may have inhabited planets and space-faring civilizations. If one such civilization intercepts Voyager and can understand these recorded contents, here is our message. This is a present from a small distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. We hope someday to have solved the problems we face to join a community of galactic civilizations. This record represents our hope and determination and our goodwill in a vast and awesome universe. Signed, Jimmy Carter, President of the United States. So I sometimes wonder if Jimmy Carter himself was a UFO contactee. And that's a really wonderful message, I think, to send out. I also think it's quite interesting that it was just a short time later uh, that there was another sighting by another governor within the United States. This occurred in October of 1973 when a huge wave of sightings was sweeping across Ohio. And among the witnesses to the activity was the governor of Ohio, John Gilligan. While driving with his wife, Katie, near Ann Arbor, Michigan, they both observed an amber-colored object. It remained in view for about a half an hour, and at one point actually sent down a, quote, vertical beam of light. This object was bright enough that it was visible through a cover of clouds, and when the clouds broke up, the object disappeared, and when asked what he thought the object was, Governor Gilligan replied that he didn't know. So this was headline news, and was actually reported on by the famed newscaster Walter Cronkite. And during a subsequent press conference, Governor Gilligan was asked about his sighting and said, I saw one the other night, so help me. I'm absolutely serious. I saw this. It was not a plane. It was not a bird. It didn't wear a cape. And I really don't know what it was. So arch debunker and skeptic Robert Schaefer has tried to explain away the sighting as the planet Mars, but does not explain how Mars can be visible through a cloud cover and send down a beam of light or suddenly disappear from view. So clearly unusual. And it was just one year later when one of the most famous pol politician UFO sightings occurred, and that was in 1974 when President Ronald Reagan, then governor of California, was taking a routine nighttime flight. His pilot was Bill Painter, and it was Bill Painter who first revealed the details of this in an interview. As pilot Bill Painter says, I was the pilot of the plane when we saw the UFO. Also on board were Governor Reagan and a couple of his security people. We were near Bakersfield when Governor Reagan and others called my attention to a big light flying a bit behind my plane. It appeared to be several hundred yards away. It was a fairly steady light until it began to accelerate and then it appeared to elongate. Then the light took off, it went up at a 45 degree angle from a normal cruise speed to a fantastic speed instantly. And although this sighting was not very well known, Reagan himself did confirm the details to Norman Miller, who was then Washington Bureau Chief for the Wall Street Journal. Reagan actually told Norman Miller that after sighting the object, he ordered his pilot, Bill Painter, to follow it. And as Ronald Reagan said, we followed it for several minutes. All of a sudden, to our utter amazement, it went straight up into the heavens. When I got off the plane, I told Nancy all about it, and we read up on the long history of UFOs. So when Norman Miller uh, interviewed Reagan about this, he was surprised that the governor was so candid 
and asked Reagan if he actually believed in UFOs. And as Norman Miller says, when I asked him that question, a look of horror came over his face. It suddenly dawned on him what he was saying, the implications, and that he was talking to a reporter. He snapped back to reality and said, let's just say that on that subject of UFOs, I'm an agnostic. So Reagan never gave any further interviews regarding his sighting, but when he was president, he did make several very provocative statements that revealed his possible belief in extraterrestrials. And in 1985, he made a very interesting enigmatic statement, and I'd just like to play a little recording of it for you here. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with, privately with General Secretary Gorbachev, when you stop to think that we're all God's children, wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. Well, I don't suppose we can wait for some alien race to come down and threaten us, but I think that between us we can bring about that realization. It was two years later in 1987, President Reagan again discussed the extraterrestrial presence, again labeling it as a threat. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? And here is a third comment, again from President Reagan. I think maybe I'd answer it this way. I, I keep in my frustration sometimes, you know, actually, if you count some of the things going on in smaller countries and all, there have been about 114 wars since World War II. But I've often wondered, what if all of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space, from another planet? Wouldn't we all of a sudden find that we didn't have any differences between us at all? We were all human beings, citizens of the world, and wouldn't we come together to fight that particular threat? A fourth comment was also revealed by Fred Barnes, the senior editor of the News Republic newspaper. And Fred Barnes overheard President Reagan speaking with Russian Foreign Minister Edward Shevardnadze, and President Reagan actually asked Minister Shevardnadze what would happen if the world faced a, quote, alien threat from outer space. Don't you think the U.S. and the Soviet Union would join together? And Shevard Nazi replied, absolutely, yes. So it's kind of a shame that Reagan is pushing forth this alien threat narrative. Uh, I wonder about that. It's clear to me that the alien threat is really to the power structure of our own politicians. I don't think the threat is coming from outer space. I think it's coming from right here on Earth. And I will say that there is some reports that Reagan may have had even more extensive contact. This is somewhat hearsay, third hand, but according to Lucille Ball and comedian Steve Allen, before even entering politics, Ronald and Nancy Reagan arrived one hour late to a Hollywood party being held by actor William Holden. And 
Reagan allegedly, I'll underline that, told Lucille Ball and Steve Allen that he and Nancy had seen a UFO while driving along the Pacific Coast Highway in Southern California. That's interesting to me because this is an area of extremely high UFO contact. This was well before Reagan's first sighting, and according to some accounts on this alleged incident, this object actually landed. However, Reagan never spoke publicly about this at all. Actress Shirley MacLaine said that Reagan said he had actually met ETs face to face and that they advised him to pursue a career in politics. But again, this aspect of Reagan's UFO contacts is somewhat controversial and has never been confirmed. Moving along, on March 5, 1977, an interesting and virtually unknown case involves an unnamed North Dakota state senator and his wife who were allegedly chased by two UFOs outside of Valley City in North Dakota. This report actually comes from a local sheriff who took the senator's report shortly after the incident and the sheriff then reported the encounter to Bob Gribble at the National UFO Reporting Center. And what I'd like to do now is just play a little audio clip from New Fork in which this sheriff talks about the North Dakota Senator's encounter. Yeah, this is the sheriff from Valley City, North Dakota? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just, uh, I talked with uh, a person last Saturday night and he said that he saw some uh, strange objects in the sky over Valley City, or in the area of Valley City, I should say. Uh huh. Okay, do you have the party's name? Yes, he's, uh, he's a state senator. Okay. And uh, he would probably be in, Wa in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota today. He's a senator and they're in session right now. And his wife was with him, so she probably knows something about it, too. He, he says when they left about the Hastings area, there was this ball, just a big ball, like a you know, flame that followed him all the way to the outskirts of the valley, and then they stopped their vehicle, and, uh, and then his wife says, well, that's a nice one there, but look on the other side of the car, and there was another one, and that one was supposed to be changing colors, you uh -huh. know. Okay, when did that occur? Saturday evening. Saturday, okay. Which would be the uh, fourth or fifth. Right. Well, sir, we sure appreciate this call, and we'll get on this. Yeah, let me know if you find anything, will you? All right, sir, we appreciate the call. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, bye. Bye. So Bob Gribble told the sheriff that he would look into the sighting, but as far as I know, no information has been forthcoming. Another very famous case involving a U.S. leader to see a UFO is none other than Congressman Dennis Kucinich, who is a U.S. representative from Ohio, and he admitted to seeing something he, quote, could not explain while staying at the home of actress Shirley MacLaine in 1982 in Washington. And uh, in her book, Saging While Aging, Shirley MacLaine basically outed Dennis Kucinich and wrote, and I quote, he had a close sighting over my home in Graham, Washington when I lived there. Dennis found his encounter extremely moving the smell of fresh roses drew him out to my balcony where, when he looked up, he saw a gigantic triangular craft, silent and observing him. It hovered, soundless, for ten minutes or so and sped away. He said he felt a connection in his heart and heard directions in his mind. And during his failed run for the U.S. presidency, Kucinich talked about the sighting and admitted that he saw this UFO. As he says, I did. It was an unidentified flying object. It was something. You have to keep in mind, Jimmy Carter saw a UFO. And more recently, Dennis Kucinich did appear on the History Channel and spoke publicly and extensively about his encounter. So he is another pretty highly placed world leader who has come forward to talk about his encounters. 
and more and more politicians are stepping forward. Another is former Arizona Governor Fife Symington. Uh, he was in office during the very famous Phoenix Lights incident in 1997, and at first did not reveal that he was in fact a witness, a first-hand eyewitness. However, after he retired from office and became a pastry chef, he, to his credit, did come forward and reveal his own experience with seeing the Phoenix Lights. And I'd just like to give a pretty long quote from him because I think it's important what he says. As Fife Symington says in his own words, In 1997, during my second term as governor of Arizona, I saw something that defied logic and challenged my reality. I witnessed a massive, delta-shaped craft silently navigate over Squaw Peak, a mountain range in Phoenix, Arizona. It was truly breathtaking. I was absolutely stunned because I was turning to the west looking for the distant Phoenix lights, and to my astonishment this apparition appeared. This dramatically large, very distinctive leading edge with some enormous lights was traveling through the Arizona sky. As a pilot and a former Air Force officer, I can definitively say that this craft did not resemble any man-made object I've ever seen. And it was certainly not high-altitude flares because flares don't fly in formation. The incident was witnessed by hundreds, if not thousands, of people in Arizona, and my office was besieged with phone calls from very concerned Arizonians. The growing hysteria intensified when the story broke nationally, and I decided to lighten the mood of the state by calling a press conference where my chief of staff arrived in an alien costume. We managed to lessen the sense of panic, but at the same time upset many of my constituents. I would, lie not, I would now like to set the record straight. I never meant to ridicule anyone. My office did make inquiries as to the origin of the craft, but to this day they remain unanswered. Eventually, the Air Force claimed responsibility, stating that they dropped flares. This is indicative of the attitude from official channels. We get explanations that fly in the face of the facts. Explanations like weather balloons, swamp gas, and military flares. I was never happy with the Air Force's silly explanations. There might very well have been military flares in the sky that evening, but what I and hundreds of others saw had nothing to do with that. I now know that I am not alone. There are many high-ranking military, aviation, and government officials who share my concerns. While on active duty, they have either witnessed a UFO incident or have conducted an official investigation into UFO cases relevant to aviation safety and national security. By speaking out with me, these people are putting their reputations on the line. They have fought in wars, guarded top secret weapons arsenals, and protected our nation's skies. We want the government to stop putting out stories that perpetuate the myth that all UFOs can be explained away in down-to-earth conventional terms. Investigations need to be reopened. Documents need to be unsealed. And the idea of an open dialogue can no longer be shunned. Incidents like these are not going away. About a year ago, Chicago's O'Hare International Airport experienced a UFO event that made national and international headlines. What I saw in the Arizona sky goes beyond conventional explanations. When it comes to the events of this nature that are still completely unsolved, we deserve more openness in government, especially our own. I couldn't agree more. So those are the U.S. leaders that I was able to find who have come forward with their own first-hand cases of UFO contact. But of course the U.S. is not alone with this. Heads of state across the world have joined the ranks of UFO witnesses. 
So let's go back in time a little bit to July 9, 1952. A gentleman by the name of Oscar Link, uh, who was a major in Hasselbeck, Germany, and the mayor of the town Gleimershausen, uh, he and his daughter Gabrielle, who was 11 years old, were taking a motorcycle ride when their motorcycle got a flat tire. And so they were walking along, and inside the woods, Gabrielle noticed two men in, quote, shiny metallic clothing examining the ground in a clearing near what appeared to be a pink disc-shaped object. It was about 13 to 15 meters in diameter and had a double row of openings around the rim, uh, portholes, and a black turret on top. And Oscar Link said it looked like, quote, a huge fr frying pan. So one of the men held a strange box which was flashing lights and uh, Link, Oscar Link, began to approach the object but his daughter Gabrielle cried out in fear and this actually alerted the figures to their presence and both of these figures promptly went inside the disc which began to vibrate making a loud humming noise uh, then it spun faster and quote took off surrounded by a ring of flames and when they went to see where this object had landed, there were distinct markings on the ground. And Oscar Link, again a mayor, speculated that perhaps he had seen a secret Soviet military test aircraft. Uh, he had no knowledge of UFOs at the time. It was only later that he speculated that perhaps this was in fact a landed UFO and extraterrestrials. And later he learned that there were, in fact, several other witnesses who had seen what was apparently the same object moving across the sky in the same area. A very unusual case. And again, these are occurring all over the world. In 1954, France experienced an unprecedented wave of UFO activity never before seen in their country. And among the witnesses was Monsieur Raoul Laurent, who was at that time the mayor of Saint Dizier. And on the evening of September 29, 1954, Mayor Laurent had just left City Hall, and looking up in the stormy sky, he observed a brightly glowing craft, shaped, he said, like an elongated cigar. It moved upward over the City Hall at a near 45 degree angle, he said it was several kilometers in altitude, but it moved so quickly it left a luminous trail behind it. So very strange. And here's a case uh, which is not well known, but apparently pretty well verified. And the UFO witness in this case is none other than Fidel Castro, who was the Prime Minister of Cuba from 1959 to 1976, and the President of Cuba from 76 to 2008. Prior to becoming Prime Minister, Fidel Castro fought in the Cuban Revolution of 1953 to 1959, and it was during this time that Castro said that he and his fellow Cuban soldiers observed an unknown object, which he described as round and enormous. Fidel Castro was interviewed by UFO researcher Jose Luis Gil, and in this interview, Fidel Castro said, and I quote, There we were, in the middle of the night, with our rifles on our knees. Then we suddenly saw a light among the stars. The light approached the group of commanders and poured over us like a bucket. Uh, he told researcher Jose Luis Gil, and said, and I quote, It was round and enormous. The countryside and the mountains became illuminated as though it was daylight. So it's a brief case, but if true, it provides yet another example of a major world leader experiencing UFO contact. And it just goes on and on. On August 3rd, 2013, Iranian politician Hassan Rouhani was sworn in as the seventh president of Iran. He's an Islamic cleric, a lawyer, and a diplomat,
but he was president of Iran for eight years until 2021. And he gave an audio taped interview in June of 2020 in which he describes how a UFO landed next to him in 1955 or 1956 when he was just a little boy. And I'd like to read a direct quote from President Rouhani. As he says in this interview, I was in the second or third grade. I was about eight or seven. I got out of our house to get to the prayer at the mosque. When I arrived at the mosque yard, I felt as though a spotlight just lit up the whole yard, and I felt that the light was coming from above. I lifted my head, and I saw something coming down from above. And as far as I could remember, it was an object with a mass of perhaps one by two by three meters. It was completely made of pure light. I couldn't see anything other than the shining light coming from it, and I saw it descend from above and land directly in the mosque yard. And I felt as if this is a vehicle. There are people inside it. It stayed there for a few minutes, and then it lifted off again. And when it lifted off, I started following it, even though I was planning on going to the mosque. I saw this thing move on to another mosque that was in the village, which was about 300 meters apart from the first mosque. I saw this, quote, howdah, which is a vehicle, land in the other mosque, and I was running in the alley to get to it. And when I got there, I saw it lift up from the mosque yard and ascend into the sky. I was watching it leave, and it left our village. And I got back to the mosque, but I had missed the morning prayer. So this is a really startling admission of an actual UFO landing by a president. Very, very interesting. And another case comes from the former president of Mexico, Luis Echeverria. He was president of Mexico from 1970 to 1976. And Mexican UFO researcher Pedro Ferriz interviewed President Echeverria, who told him, quote, I have seen a UFO. It was in 1974, during the fourth year of his term, that Echeverria revealed his sighting to a group of broadcasters, and he described his sighting, saying that he and his wife were on the terrace of their home in Cuernavaca when they saw a bright illuminated object, what he called, quote, a mother ship hovering above the horizon. As Echeverria said, the craft didn't move from there. What's interesting, because immediately following this sighting, the city of Cuernavaca suffered a widespread electrical blackout. Researcher Antonio Junius researched this incident. It apparently took place on September 23, 1965. But it turned out that President Echeverria was not the only Mexican government official to see the object. Valentin Lopez Gonzalez, the mayor of Cuernavaca, and Emilio Riva Palacio, the governor of the state of Morelos, were also among the eyewitnesses, as were several other highly placed military and business leaders. At the time, Echeverria was the Secretary of Interior of Mexico, and he had previously held the office of Secretary of Navy and would later, of course, become the President of Mexico itself. So a really interesting case. And leaders across the world are seeing UFOs. And a bizarre case occurred in 1971, and this involves a president of Uganda. This involves a Ugandan military officer, and we now know that this man is Idi Amin. He held office in 1979, and he is considered by many political historians to be one of the most brutal despots in human history. And in fact, it is estimated that somewhere between 100,000 to 500,000 people were killed under his regime, earning him terrible nicknames such as the Butcher of Africa and Black Hitler. However, uh, he is also allegedly a UFO witness. In 1973, while visiting Kampala 
in Uganda, President Idi Amin observed a strange object surrounded by a smoke-like cloud descend onto the surface of Lake Victoria, where it hovered for about seven minutes before gracefully lifting off and ascending into the sky again like a gentle rocket. The sighting received an enormous amount of publicity in the country, and over the radio, President Idi Amin told listeners that this object was of, quote, great significance and a sign of good luck to Uganda. Many other witnesses also saw the object, and President Amin said that all those who had seen it should attend prayers. So, the list of world leaders who have seen UFOs is longer than many people realize. In March of 1974, Monsieur Petit, who was then the mayor of Rimogne, France, was one of many people in the small town who saw a UFO. It was around 10.30 p.m. when many of the residents of Rimogne saw a shiny orange oval disk hovering overhead. It remained motionless for about 10 minutes, then moved away bit by bit before disappearing over the horizon. Among the strangest of accounts coming from a world leader, I think, is that of Sir Eric Gary, the prime minister of the small island country of Grenada. Sir Eric Gary was first elected prime minister of Grenada following its independence from Great Britain. And he was chief minister from 1961 to 1962 and became prime minister of independent Grenada from 1967 to 1974. And it was during his term that Prime Minister Gary had a dramatic UFO encounter. Now, this account was first published in UFO Digest and was written by Wesley Bateman, who interviewed Eric Gary firsthand. As the story goes, Eric Gary was allegedly taking grievances from local citizens and was approached by a fisherman who said that he came upon a strange craft and a deceased E.T. body which had actually washed up upon the shore of the small island country. Eric Gary and a small group of his associates traveled to the location and were amazed to see a giant humanoid body almost eight feet tall. It had a pale white complexion, long white braided hair, and six fingers on each hand. It wore a skin-tight blue one-piece suit, much like a scuba diver, and surrounding the body was actually a metallic wreckage of various shapes and sizes, including about eight metal containers. And when opened, these containers were found to hold various specimens from the area including fish, plant life, coral, and sand. Gary and his group gathered the wreckage and the body and moved it to the local medical college where they remained until allegedly being taken following the U.S. invasion of Grenada in 1983. So it was prior to this and apparently as the result of his encounter that Prime Minister Gary entreated the United Nations to form a UFO study organization. He began pushing for this in 1976, but his speech in 1978 is probably best remembered as he spoke about attempting to contact ETs, how to do it, and the implications of open official contact for all of humanity. This proposal ultimately was not followed, and later Britain released a statement which said, and I quote, the British delegation does not think that the establishment of an agency for research into unidentified flying objects is appropriate to the functions of the United Nations. Hopefully, a confrontation with the representatives of Grenada can be avoided, but the UK, the UK should not hesitate to make its views known as and when appropriate. I could not disagree more. I think the United Nations is absolutely appropriate to research UFOs and the extraterrestrial presence, but the UK did not agree and this did not go well. 
It was during the meeting at the United Nations that Prime Minister Gary said, and I quote, I know that flying saucers exist because I myself saw one three years ago. So that would be 1975. And as he continues, UN diplomats will not think I'm crazy for saying so. I am convinced that persons from outer space are studying us or perhaps living among us as earthlings. So it was Sir Eric Gary's push for openness on the subject of UFOs and extraterrestrials that may have actually led to his downfall because it was one year later in 1979 that a British lawyer by the name of Maurice Bishop enacted a hostile takeover of the government of Grenada, actually deposed Sir Eric Gary and forcibly seized control of the country. Following this, Gary went to the United States and was allegedly closely surveilled by the NSA. Ultimately, the only lasting result was that 1978 became known as the year of the UFO and led to the creation of four UFO-themed postal stamps. Mind you, the island of Grenada is less than 135 square miles, and the official reason for the U.S. invasion of this tiny country in 1983 was the threat allegedly posed to American nationals. By coincidence or not, particularly students at the medical college there, which was coincidentally the alleged resting place of the ET artifacts and body. So I think there's probably a connection there. That's pure speculation. But it seems odd that this tiny little country would be worth invading. At any rate, there are other world leaders who have seen UFOs, such as Fernando Enrique Cardosa. He was the president of Brazil from 1995 to 2003. And back in 1979, Cardoso was taking a taxi ride along the coast to the city of Ceará, Brazil, with his wife Ruth and the Brazilian ambassador Celso Furtado. And during the drive, Cardoso and Furtado both spotted a glowing object hovering over the ocean. They first thought it was a helicopter until it suddenly moved vertically and then horizontally at high speed. Cardoso's wife didn't see the object, which moved rapidly away, but at the time of his sighting, Cardoso's political career had just become, and he was about to become a senator in Sao Paulo. Later, Celso Furtado gave an interview revealing the sighting just a few years later, and only recently has former President Cardoso talked about this sighting, and during an interview on Brazilian television, he absolutely confirmed this sighting, saying, and I quote, me and Celso saw the flying disc. So again, I am not sure if this is a coincidence. I think these world leaders are being presented with an opportunity to do the right thing and are being given direct contact intentionally. Here's another case from the president of the Republic of Kalmykia in Russia. This was from 1993 to 2010 that Kirsan Ilyamzinov was president of the Republic of Kalmykia and in a television interview he revealed that he was actually visited by ETs on September 18, 1997 and that he was pulled from his apartment in Moscow actually onto a spacecraft where he communicated face to face with extraterrestrials wearing yellow jumpsuits. And as Kirsan says in his own words, I believe I talked to them and saw them. I perhaps wouldn't believe it if it wasn't for three witnesses, my driver, my minister, and my assistant. During his televised interview, he elaborated and said, I was taken from my apartment in Moscow to this spaceship, and we went to some star. And after that, I asked them, Please bring me back. They're people like us. They have the same mind, the same vision. I talk with them, and I understand that we are not alone in this world. We are not unique. I'm not a crazy man. But after I gave the first interview to Radio Freedom in Russia, 
thousands, not hundreds, thousands of people wrote me letters and called me on the phone saying, Oh, Kirsan, you are a politician and you are not afraid to talk about it. It was not in our Russian space vehicles, but with aliens. They came in a flying saucer, picked me up, and I spent a whole day in outer space. It was from my apartment. They flew in and picked me up. They were wearing yellow spacesuits. I remember this moment exactly. We went off to their interplanetary ship, and I started to feel a lack of air, a lack of oxygen. They gave me a spacesuit as well. One of the aliens pointed to his chest and indicated that the oxygen supply could be regulated by turning a dial. So this is what I did. The ship was absolutely enormous. One of its chambers was the size of a large football pitch. We landed on one of the planets and picked up some piece of equipment. They told me everything in detail. I asked them to take me back to Earth as quickly as possible because in two days I had to conduct Youth Government Week. And they brought me back and everything was normal again. A few days later I was talking and thinking, why did they take me? And I was cursing myself for not asking them any questions. But it is possible that it is still not time for us to meet these extraterrestrial civilizations. So the Russian government showed quite a bit of interest in this. And in a statement to the Huffington Post, former MUFON director Jan Harzen writes, Kirsan Ilyamzinov is one Russian politician who publicly discussed UFOs and culturally it apparently was not a disaster. Whether he's outspoken about UFOs from experience or just for publicity and attention, we don't know. But it's rather unusual when you compare him to American politicians. Here in the U.S., it is still political disaster for a politician to, to discuss UFOs from a personal point of view. So the Russian officials were not happy about this, and again, they took a story very seriously. And in fact, Andrei Lebedev of the Russian parliament wrote a letter to the president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, demanding that Ilya Mzinov submit to a state interrogation to reveal any information he shared with the ETs. So there you go. That's a long list of world leaders who have come forward and talked firsthand about their own UFO encounters. And while it's a pretty long list, I expect you could times it by 10 or 100 because the vast majority of people do not talk about their sightings. And I bet this is especially true for people who hold political office. Because as we have seen, it's usually not to a politician's benefit to go public with their encounters. Some have bravely done so and not suffered negative consequences. But some certainly have. Frances Barwood was a city councilwoman and really the only one holding office of any level who talked publicly about the Phoenix Lights of 1997. She didn't even see them. She hadn't seen a UFO, and yet she was mercilessly ridiculed by the press and eventually lost her seat as a city councilwoman. And there's another case involving a Florida politician by the name of Bettina Rodriguez. And in 2018, she ran for Congress and was doing quite well. She was recommended by several newspapers as the leading candidate from her state. And yet, then she went public with her first-hand experiences with ET contact, human-looking ETs, and her campaign spiraled downward from there. And certainly, when Dennis Kucinich talked about his sighting during a presidential campaign, uh, this did not appear to help his campaign at all. So I think it could be tantamount to political suicide to come forward, or used to be. But now is the time for truth and transparency on this subject. There's no more room for lies on <laughs> when it comes to UFOs. P people need to tell the truth, and I think especially our world leaders need to 
gather their courage and just talk about this truthfully and transparently. I did cover all of these cases in my book, Not From Here, Volume 4. So if you'd like to learn more about it, uh, yeah, check that out. I think you might enjoy it. But until next time, I really appreciate you watching. And keep asking questions, keep searching for the truth, and most important, keep having fun.